All right, so I'm about to start up a couple projects at once here. One, I'm going to get this Power Max 6100 to run on LCD once and for all, since I now have what I think will work. Yeah, totally untested, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, I've got my old Pentium 2. Actually, it's a Pentium 3. My old P2BF motherboard with a gig of RAM and the hard drives are actually sitting over here currently because I am duplicating my Mac emulation so that I can try to copy the files off the Mac emulation disk onto that SCSI drive you see sitting on top of the Power Mac. So yeah, that's right. So it's doing, and I gotta disconnect it now. Yeah, so there's that. Alright. So this guy just goes and slides right in here. The only reason I like this case, <laughs> it's a complete disgusting mess. Otherwise, a big old gaping hole in the front. But it's an Antec, so it's cool, you know. <laughs> I've got this for the sake of running the SCSI drive on the Power Mac because it'll use the SCSI interface off a 25 pin, what's basically a <laughs> what I consider a printer cable. But I've got an actual card in here so I'll take my 50 pin 4 disk drive connector cable and I'll go ahead and plug it in right now because yeah. I have to I gotta go ahead and format this drive because I think it's got Windows XP installed on it right now totally useless <laughs> but first things first Let's see if we can get this baby to work. See if we can get one of these LCDs to take this max video output. that both machines should be ready to start up now I have to refer to this in order to figure out what pin or rather what switches because you saw the whole row of dip switches on that uh, little adapter right all those little switches right there they will be the ones to determine how this thing works and whether it works I guess <clears throat> So there's all these different modes here, and all these different um, resolutions that I can choose from, but 
I gotta think about this monitor. This monitor goes up to a maximum of 1024 by 768 at 60 hertz. That's its maximum, and it does not do any more than 60 hertz, unlike this one that'll do up to 75. So, let's see, this one actually has a mode for SVGA 640 by 480 or 800 by 600 at 60 hertz. Now, I have no idea what mode <laughs> what mode is needed for these monitors at all but it needs one of these hopefully and we shall see which one it might be now we're just gonna go ahead and if you'll notice the resolution seems to be set by switch two and three you see 23, 235, 2356, 237, 236, 2367, or 23. Now that's just a bunch of 23. So 640 by 480 seems to be pins two, or uh, rather switches two and three. So we'll just go ahead and set those two right now. Okay. Switches two and three are on. Now for mode one, we need to also hit switch number five. Let's go ahead and just do that. Now, from what I read online, basically all the resolution switching does is grounds out a certain pin or two to, uh, I guess, Apple monitors back then didn't dynamically set resolutions, but rather had hardware set resolutions. It's rather dumb. But whatever, you know. If it works. Okay, I am having an issue with this thing right now. <laughs> uh, okay, I had to take this whole thing off for a second. Uh, BRB. Okay, now it's looking like it might actually stay together. <laughs> so we have pin, or, uh, switches 2, 3, and 5 currently closed camera hates focusing in the dark so of course I can't do it there we go that'll work so we got switches two three and five let's see if this thing does anything no it's not gonna do it the first time because the CMOS battery is still dead I haven't replaced it and I don't know if I'm going to <laughs> it's not a big deal Classic Seagate hard drive startup. Well, based on the fact that I'm hearing the hard drive video has posted, but I'm not getting anything here, so okay. Mode 2 is 2, 3, 5, and 6. Okay, let's flip 6 real quick. I don't see where any harm could come to this thing by me flipping switches on the fly. Well, I hope. <laughs> and I still get nothing. <sighs> Except an orange light. Okay, mode 3 is 2, 3, and 7. So you shut down 5 and 6 and turn on 7. Uh, we had something for a second there, I think. <laughs> I saw a green light. <laughs> Let me flip that switch again. Now maybe I was seeing things. Okay, mode four er, is two, three, and six. So let's try six. Just by itself. Oops, that is seven. Mode six. <clears throat> Not mode six, pin six. Not pin six, switch six. Ugh. And it's not working either, so... Oh, there's the ding telling me the date's wrong. Alright, mode 5. 2, 3, 6, and 7. Let's see if that does what I want it to do. Ha! Oh, we have a desktop! <laughs> sweet! Freaking sweet. Well, we obviously know mode 6 wasn't going to work because that was all of the extra pins turned off. Switch is 2, 3 on, and that wasn't working anyway. So, all right. So, the working method is 2, 3, 6, 7. <clears throat> cool. Very cool. 
we've got that. Now I need to make sure if I've got a certain program on this thing that'll enable me to set up hard drives on the fly. Sweet, I do. Yeah, I'll be needing that. Once I get this hard drive hooked up to this machine. But I'm not ready for that yet. I had to switch out the hard or the CD-ROM drive because the other drive wasn't working properly. So I've got a standard tray CD-ROM now. Let's boot this guy up. This is pretty neat. I actually get uh, smart attributes on the Seagate. 2.3 gigabytes. And quite a few bytes read and written here. <laughs> and since I don't read hexadecimal, I'm going to have to get a calculator on that later. But yeah, this little drive seems to be doing alright. Doesn't seem to be having any issues. Uh, but then again, this is old, so I don't even know how accurate the attributes are. But anyway. This drive currently has Windows XP installed on it. I might have mentioned that before, but I don't think there's anything important on it, to be honest with you. It's got speed fan. Uh, yeah, I don't think I put too much on this machine because it was just to see if it would work, I think. But I'm just going to go ahead and format. Quick, do it, just do it. <clears throat> and I think I need to go with FAT32 because I don't think this computer will read in TFS. Oops. Meanwhile, it goes flash. Format complete. So yeah, I need to actually change that. <laughs> FAT32. Uh, let's go with Mac. Oops. What did I just do? Oh, screw it. I'll just go over here. Manage. Things running pretty quick for being an old P3. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, Pentium 3, 600 megahertz with a gig of RAM. Old Windows XP. No service packs or anything. This was meant to be a machine to run Arduino only, but I never got around to messing with it. Delete. Partition. Uh oh. Uh, force it. <laughs> I don't care. Go away. <laughs> New partition. Primary partition. 2049. I, yeah, I'd be a D. Fat. Uh, I think it can do fat. Mac. Quick format. Um. Let's go back a sec. I need to change this. Let's make it 1024. Make it even. There we go. Give it one gig and then we'll give it another gig. Why not? Oops. Alright, two. Yeah, that was easy. Okay. That's done. I can get out of that now. Now I need to make sure my Mac emulator is even going to work on this machine. Alright, I need to get the disks remounted because I do not have an ePrograms Games Emulator's Mac disks folder right now. I need to change all of this stuff right now, so I'll be back. All right, moment of truth. Disk is set up in the right location. All files are pointed in the right direction. Let's see what we get. We don't get anything. All right, I forgot I had to install that. So that's installed now. Let's see what we can get. Ah, disk is in the right place. Run. Oh, I don't care. Ah, it works. <laughs> A little bit slower than the... MSI, of course, but dang, still pretty quick. <laughs> still pretty quick. Not bad. Alright, let's go here. We have a D&E drive, because I enabled that. 
Alright, let's see if I can transfer files. Let's go with programs. And we'll copy it over here. It seems to be working, but we shall see. Alright, we've also got installers, games, and documents. Well, the documents aren't really important. I'm going to copy everything. This might take a while. <laughs> As you can see, Basilisk is using quite a bit of my CPU on this machine because it's only a single core machine. <laughs> Been running at a fraction of the speed the uh, other computer is. But I am done with the file copy process now. Now we're about to have the real moment of truth. Shut that down. Wait for the red bar to show up. And then we can shut down. And disconnect this drive from this computer and hook it up to this computer. It's ready. Okay. Ready for this. Unplug this. Yeah. I don't know why I'm plugged. Okay. And then we'll plug it into this one. Uh, oh, what the heck. <laughs> we can play upside down, see. The nice thing about old Macs and their SCSI systems is it's mostly plug and play. All I gotta do is just get the. All I basically got to do is just get it the right SCSI ID, and uh, you know, I'm not entirely certain I do right now. I think it might be conflicting with the internal CD-ROM, but we're about to find out. Oops. Uh, open. <laughs> That's not the one I want. I want drive setup. Let's see what we get. Not mounted. Uh oh. I don't want to initialize, I want to mount. thought this thing could read DOS drives. I know I set it up that way. Alright. Give me a minute here. Okay. Now I'm making this video just as much for me as anybody else out there who's trying to do this crazy stuff. <laughs> okay. So. Alright. In order to get this to work. <laughs> one. You gotta have this uh, A ASPI thing. <laughs> download Adaptech ASPI drivers and all that stuff. Install them. Uh, I got this. This is the file right here. I just downloaded it from Adaptech. And uh, run that. You gotta be in a, in a command line window. Put a CMD F. Oops. I can't type. Ah, CD. Adaptech. Adaptech. Oh, freaking A. Yeah, do all that. Install .bat, which is a batch file. Or just do install. Uh, I forgot what it was. Anyway, do that. And then. Okay. 
This is the part that kept getting me. I could not figure it out. Well, okay. Take this drive, and I hooked it up to this computer and formatted it on this computer as an untitled drive. All right, so it was formatted for Mac OS. Windows can't see this drive unless I go into uh, disk management and like it's gonna totally yell at me because it's not an initialized drive. So we don't want to do that though. Uh, we want to go here. We do not want anything related to this drive in the disk tab. We want to go over to SCSI and make sure SCSI is enabled. And we want to go down here. And once we have the Adaptech drivers installed, well, well, let's remove this for now. And remove this and remove this. We'll go ahead and add the Seagate to slot 3. Because it's currently set for ID3. And it's going to warn you about it doing all that. And then you go to Source, Seagate. Target. You know what? I don't even know if this is required. Hang on. Let me just find out for a second. I don't care. Go away. I'll find out if that's required or not. No, it isn't. How about that? See, there's the untitled drive right there. That's, that's this drive. So, theoretically, I could just go ahead and... Okay, I need access to my shift key real quick. Hang on. Uh, all four of those. We'll take all four of them. We'll move this window real quick, and then we'll take all those. Oh crap, it didn't work. Okay. Since this doesn't take very long, I'm just going to go ahead and copy everything right now. 725 items, give or take. And then we're going to trade drives over to this computer again and see if it works finally. <laughs> All this work. Like, oh my god. I didn't realize getting stuff between PC and old school classic Macintosh could be such a pain in the butt. <sighs> and it's like 5 o'clock in the morning. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> I was trying everything with this thing, trying to get this thing to work. So I could get files from this machine to this machine. I was trying ZIP 250. I don't even know if System 5, 753 detects ZIP drives at all. I tried hooking up the drive to this computer and it just locked it up. Until I unplugged it and it, the time would stick when I'd plug it in. And then I'd unplug it and jump like three minutes ahead. <laughs> I was like, ah. I was running out of ideas and then I started just jumping on computer over there researching online to see if I could find anything and no not really and then by chance I was just messing around in the setup app and found that and I'm like well it wouldn't let me do that before because I didn't have the ASPI drivers installed but well, now I know and as soon as we get this figured out as, this, as soon as this gets done I'm gonna shut her down shut the whole thing down transfer it over to this machine and see if we get anything because those two programs right there the HDSC setup and drive setup do not work in the emulation at all they I don't think it's compatible with the emulation because it possibly doesn't think there's any SCSI controller or something I'm not even sure but considering this is a SCSI emulation I'm a little curious now if maybe I'll be able to do that now. Okay, programs. Let's see if it'll work now. No. See, I get this. It won't do anything. And I go over to just plain old drive setup, and it basically says the same thing. So, yeah, I don't know what to think about all that, but okay, this thing is done now. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit shut down. And shut down. And we'll see if maybe I'll get lucky. All right. Moment of truth.
gotten the folders off the screen. <laughs> oh, finally. Finally. Oh my god, it only took all freaking night. <sighs> wow, okay. And it... And it works. <laughs> Oh, oh my God, that was just ridiculous. It should not have taken nearly as long as it did. I've got pilots in my escape velocity folder on this one because it's all from my emulation. <sighs> oh, I thought I'd never get it. This is a fun little one. I like the music in it more than anything else. Whoa. Yeah, so that's just freaking sweet. And you do not want to know what funny speech is. Trust me, you don't. Because <laughs> I'm the one who likes to go to simple text and just write random crap and make it speak, you know? Like, okay, wake up. Oops. We can't do caps lock because it won't speak that correctly. Now yeah, let's do that. You suck. <sighs> I can't have numbers either. Yeah, stuff like that, you know. All good. No. Go away. Well, it's a little while later now, and I've actually done a couple other things since that particular ending. It's not even the same night anymore, but I'm not going to put a new date on this video because I just don't feel like it. I had to go through all my discs and figure out which ones were actually Mac discs and which ones weren't, and I made a Mac OS 8 disc. So that's awesome. And this computer actually reads it, which is even more surprising, actually. So, what have I done since then, you might wonder? I have replaced the CMOS battery with a AA, basically, placeholder. <laughs> which I just freaking put random wires to. And the placeholder is actually underneath the hard drive right now. And I cannot get to it without pulling out all of this stuff. <laughs> so, I'm not going to. But anyway, I've got this thing hanging out right down here so I don't lose it, which is great. And now, I'm gonna turn the powers on, get a Dell. It'll shut off. This is still set to 2367, and then I can turn this on. darn thing will turn on with me, without me having to reset the computer again and again and again. Plus, it keeps the proper time so I don't get that message when I first start it up either. And that right there is actually the proper time. Where is my keyboard? <laughs> wow, right in front of my face. Go figure. Yeah, proper time, proper date, and I don't have to go in and randomly set it every now and then. So yeah, I got, oh, I'm dealing with floppy disk and it's no longer relevant. Empty. So yeah, all of my Power Mac data is here, all of my games, documents, installers, all those sorts of fun stuff. And I actually discovered something about drive setup. The one I had in my emulation was version 105. This did not work in the emulation. Version 1.7.3 actually does work in the emulation. So I'm wondering if maybe 173 came from Mac OS 8 or something like that, but right now this drive is not formatted for dual drives, so 
I don't have eight on anything but the emulation, but anyway. <clears throat> so there's that. And I actually did get it to work with this monitor, but I figure it's easier just to deal with this one for now. Oh, and there's the old battery. Um, in order to get it to work with this monitor, the switch configuration is 14679. So like that to get it to work on this monitor and I can actually get it to something like 832 by 6 something I can't remember now but so there is that and it all works it all just freaking works and it's fantastic <laughs> so I'm just working on the end of this video here and yeah so it's already long and now this video clip is 4 minutes and 55 seconds long so goodbye Actually, I'm going to do this first. We're here, we're here, we're here. Pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-pal-